So now I'm answering the second half of this Cambridge IGCSE paper two physics paper. So that's the multiple choice. So we're going to start with question 21. Watch my other video to watch 1 to 20. Which row correctly describes light waves? Remember these are transverse waves. And remember with your transverse definition, vibrations occur perpendicular to the direction in which the wave is travelling. So let's have a look. No, no, yes, yes, yes. So it's D. The diagram shows part of a diffracted wave pattern. Changes are made to the wavelength and to the gap size to produce a semicircular diffractive wave pattern. Which row produces the required semicircular diffracted wave pattern? So in order to get this level of diffraction, remember we need the wavelength to be longer than the gap in the barrier and therefore the gap in the barrier should remain the same. And that's why C is the answer. Which statement about a thin converging lens is correct. So remember, as the name suggests, converging means that those rays will be brought together. And if we use this picture to help us, you can see how these parallel rays up here, when they pass through the lens, they're refracted so that they go through the principal focus, which is shown there. And so if we look at our options, we can see that B shows this. All rays initially parallel to the principal axis of the lens are refracted through the principal focus. The diagram shows white light passing through a prism. Which description of what happens as the light passes into the prism is correct? So we can use this diagram to help us a little bit before we get going. Notice you can look at how much refraction has taken place. Violet has been refracted the most. Red has been refracted the least. And this therefore means that in terms of changes in speed, the violet one has slowed down the most. So let's see what the options are. The speed of the red light is less than the speed of the violet light. Nope. The speed of the red light is greater than the speed of the violet light, and the red is the least refracted. Yes, that's what I've just said. Which row gives possible values for the speed of sound? So remember that sound travels fastest in a solid. Why? Because the particles are closest together. So we definitely don't want any of the options which show the opposite relationship. And that's why A is the answer. A police car with its siren sounding is stationary in heavy traffic. A pedestrian notices that although the loudness of the sound produced does not change, the pitch varies, which row describes the amplitude and the frequency of the sound. So we're saying that the loudness hasn't changed. Remember, loudness and amplitude are linked, so we know that the amplitude can't have changed. The pitch, remember, is related to the frequency, so that must have changed. So we're looking at the rows where the amplitude is constant but the frequency is changing, which is why B is the answer. A piece of steel is slightly magnetised. It is hit several times with a hammer. What effect will this have on the steel? So remember steel is a hard magnetic material, which means it retains its magnetism. Now if you hit it when the steel is parallel to the strong magnetic field, it becomes magnetised more strongly. And then if you hit it when the steel is at right angles to a weak magnetic field, it will lose its magnetism. So B is the answer here. Two soft iron pins are suspended from the south pole of a bar magnet, which diagram shows how the pins are deflected. This is going to cause the pins to be repelled, which is why C is the answer. 29. A negatively charged plastic rod is brought near an uncharged metal sphere and held there. What happens when the metal sphere is charged? So remember, it's only the electrons that can move, so that's why we're picking between A and B. And in this case, those excess electrons will flow from the plastic rod to the metal sphere and to Earth. So the answer here is A. Which statement defines the electromotive force EMF of a cell? So you need to just learn this. It is the energy supplied by the cell to drive one coulombs of charge around a complete circuit, which is C. Four wires are made of the same material, which wire has the greatest resistance? So remember, with larger resistances, you're going to have a narrow diameter and a longer wire. So we're going to pick between A and B because those are the longer wires. Which one has the narrower diameter? Well, it's A, so the answer here is 31A. In which circuit is there just a single lamp lit? So let's go through these things in turn. So the electrons are coming out of here. They're flowing through this first diode, which remember allows current to flow only in the direction pointed by the arrow. So it comes down to here, and then it reaches this junction where they can flow either this way or this way. 
And at that point, it means that both light bulbs will be on, which is not what this question is asking about. It wants just a single lamp lit. Okay, let's look at B now. You've got issues here in that the current just isn't going to flow through this diode. So that's going to be a problem for B. C is looking more hopeful because we've got our diode pointing in the correct direction. It can't go this way, the electrons, because look at the direction the arrowhead's pointing. So they'll go down here, causing this light bulb to be illuminated and then continue flowing around C here. A student uses four ammeters, P, Q, R and S, to measure the current in different parts of the circuit. Which two ammeters read the largest current? Remember that current is shared in a parallel circuit, so the ammeters closest to the batteries will show the highest reading, which is why P and Q is the answer A. Which combination of logic gates gives the truth table shown? So in order to do this, we need to take each of these logic gates and compare the inputs from the table with them and if it would hold true. So in A, we have an OR gate and a NOT gate. This means that if either X or Y is 1, then our output from the OR gate will be 0, and the output from the NOT gate would be 1, so the top line is correct, so, so far so good. However, what about if X is 0, according to this bit of the table here, and Y is 1, then the, our output from the OR gate will be 1, and the output from the NOT gate would be 0, as opposed to 1, and so the second line is wrong, which is why A is not correct. In B, we have both an AND and a NOT gate. This means that as both X and Y is 0, then our output from the OR gate will be 0, and the output from the NOT gate would be 1. So again, we've got our top line being correct. If X is 0 and Y is 1, so putting those into here, then our output from the AND gate will be 0, and the output from the NOT gate would be 1. So the second line is correct, so we're still good. Now we're looking at the third line, so if x is 1 and y is 0, we have the same situation as the second line, so the third line is also correct. If both x and y are 1, the output from the AND gate will be 1, so the output at z through the NOT gate will be 0, and therefore bottom line is correct. And that actually means that B is the right answer here. That was an awful lot of effort for one mark. A transformer is needed to convert a supply of 240 volts alternating current into 4,800 volts alternating current which pair of coils would be suitable for this transformer? So our equation is voltage in the primary divided by voltage in the secondary equals number of turns primary over number of turns secondary. So we know that we've got 240 volts going in, 4,800 coming out equals, I'm going to use these numbers here and sub them in and see when I get a match on the right hand side. So let's put 50 over x here and x equals a thousand so I'm super lucky that matches which means a is the answer straight away yeah I don't have to do more working the diagram shows part of a long current carrying conductor at which point is the magnetic field strongest it's going to be the point closest to that wire carrying the current so that's c a beam of particles moves through a magnetic field in which situation do the particles experience a magnetic force so remember, in order to create a force, the particles need, need to be moving perpendicular across the magnetic field lines. And therefore, it can't be A or B because look, they're moving parallel. And then if you look at D, we've got neutrons moving while well, they're uncharged. We need a charged particle here. Beta particles, remember, are negatively charged. So the answer is C. Which statement is correct for the nucleus of any atom? The nucleus contains electrons, neutrons and protons. No, because remember, it's the shells that contain the electrons. The nucleus contains the same number of protons as neutrons. No, that doesn't hold true. The nucleus has a total charge of zero. No, because it contains positive charge and neutral charges. The nucleus is very small compared with the size of the atom. Yes, thank goodness, there's our answer. Two beams of radiation, P and Q, enter an electric field as shown. What type of radiation is a P and Q? So we remember alpha particles are positively charged because they contain two protons and two neutrons. So they're going to be attracted to something negative, which is why Q is alpha. Beta particles are fast-moving electrons. They're negatively charged, so they're going to be attracted to something positive. And so the answer here is A, which equation represents the beta decay of lead 209. So remember, with beta decay, a neutron turns into a proton and stays within the atom, which means the mass number stays the same but the atomic number goes up by one. So we're looking for the electron, the beta particle, to be on the right-hand side of the equation. Now let's look for the mass numbers being the same. Yeah, both options are still okay. We need to look for the atomic number going up by one. 
that's happened here, so the answer is C.